Hey, what's going on guys? Kitsune TCG here, back with another video, and today we're going to be doing an updated version of a deck I did a few months ago in Adventure Trap Tricks. Now, obviously, since then we've had the announcement and then the release tomorrow of the Trap Tricks Structure Deck, which definitely has added quite a few really good components to the deck overall. Uh, now, definitely in the near future I'll do a kind of budget $30, um, you know, all three tr um, Structure Deck Trap Trick decks. Uh, and there were a lot of really good cards in that deck, so you definitely can make a pretty good deck with that. Uh, and then I'll also kind of do a little bit more pure uh, version of the deck uh, in the future as well. But this is definitely my uh, favorite version of the deck overall, and I definitely think it is going to be like the strongest competitively. You know, where it lands in the competitive uh, matchup, it probably right now is just going to be rogue at best. Uh, it definitely doesn't like threaten, you know, tier 1.5, tier 2, or anything like that, but it can definitely do really well and put up a pretty strong board, um, you know, kind of turn after turn pretty consistently. You are still maxing out on your 3 Mermelio. Um, this is going to be your best normal summon in the deck. On the turns, you know, you don't have access to the Adventure Air Package, but because we are playing 41, you know, you, you are going to pretty often see it, so most of your trap trick monsters normal summon effects aren't going to come up too often uh, until like turn two or you know turn three things like that but you still do want to max out just because it also does have a really good special summon effect being able to pop a back row uh, from there we know we are running two of the new special summon trap tricks this one just can put a level four monster on the board you know that can be great if you need an extra ring four if you're able to keep it uh, um, on board you're going to be able to protect your back row um, once per, you know, destruction effect, so that can be pretty nice as well, but, you know, usually if you have this, you have a pretty good chance of having ended on, you know, between one to two at rank fours, so more than often than not, it is getting used for, um, you know, XYZ material. Uh, the two Mantis, uh, this is great because, you know, you can search out any trap trick monster in your deck but oftentimes that's not going to necessarily come up and with its effect to kind of bounce a card and then set some cards um you know that could come up um you know for things like the draco bag but you know it's not going to come up too too often so but you still definitely want to play the two just you know have additional names and its effect to add a monster can come up if you have Mantis, you know, and then you can basically search out the new special summon. So you could have gone in Mantis, search this, you know, go Mantis into Sarah, uh, activate this effect in hand, special it, and then you can go Sarah's effect to essentially grab a back row. So, you know, it does have some application. So definitely why you want to at least run two of them. Now it is a little bit weird to be only running one Dianea, but you know, the amount of, with the ability to not have one that special summons, plus, you know, you do have, we are running one copy of the field spell, which you can search relatively easily with, like, the new rank four, uh, being able to grab Pudica and then things like that. So you don't need, really need to run too many copies of Dianea or the field spell itself. Uh, but yeah, and overall, I mean, it's, you know, special summon effect, being able to set one again. They, they, they are pretty good, but... You know, those effects aren't coming up too, too often anymore. Uh, Vesiculo, really you're just using this for an additional name. Uh, sometimes, I guess, its effect in hand a special can come up, but if you're having to, you know, ditch a resource, you definitely don't want to be doing that if you can avoid it. Uh, and then its effect engraved a special back, that's going to hardly ever come up. You know, if you're in a board state that bad where you don't have any built um, setback or any back row at all, you're kind of in a rough spot, so it really just kind of depends on, you know, what your hand looks like and things like that, but it is still worth running one. You know, we are running one Pudica, not so much for its ability to search the field spell, because again, in this deck you're not really getting your normal summon effect, but because it does have the ability on special summon to banish a monster, so that is kind of what it's here more for, you know, an additional interaction using Sarah. You know, you are still wanting running the one field spell. It may seem weird to run just one, but because then you can search with Pudica, you can, and, you know, you can search Pudica through Mantis, you can search it through the new XYZ. 
you're not needing to really run more than one, and its effect isn't going to be necessary too often, so that's why it's neat to have, but oftentimes you'll probably end up siding it out. Just to parallel exceed, you know, you can even exchange the field spell with the third or, you know, some other cards, but right now, because of the additional ways to get a level four on board, I don't think that you need the three parallel exceeds, but if it is something that you would rather run, you definitely have a few things you could change it out for. Uh, we are still maxing out on Shade Brigadine. Obviously, the deck now does have a an archetype um, card that can be activated on your turn, but having to ditch a normal trap card is a kind of heavy cost, so you are running one just because it has a really good graveyard effect, not so much for the turn it was set effect. So definitely why you still want to uh, max out on Shade Brigadine. Now, as far as the trap holes go, you are running five of them. Uh, with two of them being the Grave Diggers, now obviously this is the best one in the deck. It would be amazing if we could have a spell trap version of this, but for right now, we just have the monster one, so you definitely want to max out on this one. The one Floodgate is really good. It has a pretty good matchup against Kashtira. Your opponent will learn, but, you know, a lot of them really do put the Shangri Law in the extra monster zone, and when you hit them with this, it will definitely show them they should not do that again. Um, you know, being able to do that and then you lock them out of any, you know, link plays or anything like that as follow-up. So this definitely can shut down quite a few decks. Um, but yeah, definitely want to run at least one. Now we're running one of the new ones, obviously the one uh, that can summon itself, plus has a really good graveyard effect to special back a trap trick monster. But you are also running one... Um, Delusion Drop Hole, I can't remember if that's what the name was, um, ended up being in the, in the structure deck, but this one, you know, just destroy a special summon monster with 2,000 or more attack, plus if you've already activated a whole card, or there at least was one in the graveyard if you've used Rafflesia's effect, you can banish one monster from your opponent's graveyard in addition. Now this can be pretty huge, obviously it's not a great thing against Kashtira because, you know, they have the ability to special back from Grave or Banish, does not target with um, Birth and things like that, so putting their cards in the Banished isn't too good a, a big of a deal. But Branded, you know, you have the ability to stop like Brandon and Red, I think Brandon and White as well, they both target a card in the graveyard. Um, you can get rid of some, you know, Tinnies for Sword Soul, things like that. So it does have really good place in the game, just not against, like, say, the top deck in Kashtira. Uh, moving on to the adventure engine, you are maxing out here. You know, this definitely could be another place where you put in the parallel exceed by taking out one of the rights, because obviously Water Enchantress can add a right of Aramis Seer from the graveyard, so it could be something you could do, but overall I think it is still worthy maxing it out, because you do want to be seeing this engine as often as possible. And then you obviously are still going to run the one copy of Griffin, the one right, and then the one Draco back. I don't think there's any reason to play Illegal Knight. I think in all forms the Draco bag is going to be better, but maybe Illegal Knight could be pretty good, you know, to put back some Cash Tiras, so maybe worth checking out, but typically your Omni Negate is going to be probably the more um, favorable option to go for. Uh, from there you do have Consistency cards in Pot of Prosperity, so obviously this is going to be a really easy way for you to pick out your missing piece, whether it be the Adventure Engine, Maybe you need a normal trap card, maybe you need a trap trick monster, whatever the case may be, being able to dig, you know, at least three to six deep is going to definitely, you know, kind of make the deck a little bit more consistent. And then, you know, evenly, you definitely want to have some form of going second ability, same with Book of Eclipse. These cards here really just make it easier if you do happen to get stuck going second and just in addition you know book of clips is a pretty good um you know card to have on your opponent's turn because your main monster that you want to keep on the board is sarah obviously not going to be flipped with book of eclipse so definitely running worthy running in the deck in the main uh, and then finishing out with two imperm you know they have applications with a lot of your cards being normal traps so it's really the only tramp the hand trap that i think you really need to absolutely run Moving on to the extra deck, um, pretty similar, you know, you've only added two cards or so and then switched some of the rank fours around depending on the meta. 
Still running the one Rafflesia. We have brought in the new rank 4 that can search out a monster, plus its high attack does make it easier to go for game with something like the rank 3. But you still have a pretty easy access code package as well. The one Alamaris, this could be something that you could cut for maybe another rank 4 or something like that. Maybe a second Zeus, just to, you know, avoid cash tier banishing your one. Redoer is going to be really good in this deck, more so than most, just because you have a better chance than, than most other decks to put a trap underneath it, giving it its really good effect. With Bagushka, again, you know, with this deck having Sarah, you know, not being able to be put to defense, it's going to be a pretty good option against a lot of decks, though I definitely think, depending on your matchup, that could be something you'd want to go into. Finishing out the ranks, you know, we obviously had the little Zeus package, you know, going into Chaka 9, going in then into Borbo, attacking and then going main phase 2 into Zeus, giving you, you know, four or um, two activations of Zeus can be pretty important, against, especially against certain matchups. So it is definitely something you want to run. Uh, just two Sarah, I don't think you really need to run three. If you're going to be running into needing three in a long game, most, uh, game, or most other decks are going to outgrind you, so... You know, don't necessarily need to do that anymore. Uh, the one Link Spider, this is obviously for, you know, if you have Shade Brigadine plus Parallel Exceed, you're still able to get something on the board. And that does kind of lead into the Splash, Ma Splash Mage plus Decode Heat Soul. This is really good because, I mean, essentially, you know, you can have another way, you know, you can kind of Link Climb up into something, uh, plus you will get, you know, two draws, which could turn into something pretty useful. Uh, you are playing the one link three just because really the addition of the thousand attack can really kind of help you push for game uh, and then access code as well just kind of gives you another option to close out games which the deck definitely needs because it doesn't really have a super secure way to do that uh, finally obviously side decks are going to depend on you know your locals and things like that but you know for here Three Lancia, yeah, this is obviously going to be really good against Kashtira, just preventing your opponent from being able to banish, so you can keep your zones free. Plus Nibiru, you know, if you need to bring that in, it's just another kind of way for you to uh, take out your opponent's board. I've seen a lot of people not playing Nibiru, and I think it is worthy of, you know, side decking at this point, just because, you know, you will be able to prevent them from doing, like, the 9-10, you know, zone lock. Uh, one Duster... That is going to be pretty important against other back row decks. It's not too big of a deal. You know, you are kind of able to play through it, and obviously with your extra deck monsters being unaffected by trap cards. But, um, you know, you still do want to have some form of interaction there. Uh, from there, we are running two Trap Trick. Uh, and this is really just going to facilitate the next three. Uh, Two-Dimensional Barrier. This is obviously going to shut down several decks. Uh, and so will the next few cards in the Mischief of the Yokai. Uh, that obviously will make uh, cards that are on the field lose two levels, so that really can interact well with Kashtira, preventing them from being able to go under the rank sevens. And then Mischief of the Gnomes uh, the ones in, will lower the ones in the hand by one, and that obviously is going to affect sprites, so... Effectively, you're running four copies of all these really important traps, and depending on what deck you go against, it just gives you a few options to, you know, kind of play from there. So, overall, this is kind of the deck that I think can end up rogue. I definitely think it can do well. I don't foresee it, you know, winning any, you know, major tournaments like a YCS or anything like that, but you can definitely top a regional with something like this deck, as long as, you know, you are a pretty good pilot and you have kind of learned your interactions with the current meta. But yeah, I'm definitely kind of excited to continue playing it. I'll probably try and take it to one or two regionals and see how it does. But yeah, let me know what y'all think about the deck, and I will see y'all next time.